Hello and welcome back to Knights of the Blind. Thanks for joining us again. This is the show that features Oregonians helping other Oregonians with a particular focus on those that help others with sight and hearing needs. And uh, we're very excited to have as our guest today, uh, Mr. Brad King, who's with the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation. So for just a moment, go back down memory lane and think about that time you were in school and you had your eyes checked. Uh, maybe you're in the cafeteria or the gymnasium and you were pointing whether or not the E was pointed up or pointed to the left or pointed down. And if you were like me, you forgot your glasses and you tried to cheat and it's just so you could pass the test. Uh, it's very important that we, we screen children's vision and screen their hearing so that they can be uh, equipped and ready to learn. And, and, and Brad King, who's with us today, uh, is going to tell us a lot about how here in Oregon, Lions Clubs, I guess, are involved in, in helping kids uh, find out if they can see well. Yeah, Doug, Lions Clubs are deeply involved in that. Um, it's still a mandate in the state of Oregon that children have their vision screened. Uh, but it's been very difficult for school districts to do that. Uh, with funding, with manpower issues, everything that's gone on, and a lot of districts have let that slide away. Uh, Lions Clubs through the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation uh, have stepped up uh, and through the mobile health screening program uh, do that function now throughout the state. Okay, so I, I've heard a little bit about this, what you call the mobile health screening program, and, mm -hmm. and I understand that's what's called the MHSP program, and, and I've seen this big truck. Right. This big 64-foot truck. I know mm -hmm. we even have a picture of it that we'll show a little bit later. Yep. Uh, but there's this big 64-foot truck with lions on, painted on the side, and it's a beautiful truck, and it drives around Oregon. This is the program that you're involved with, is that right? That's one segment of the program. Uh, that truck uh, is, is an image of how the program first started. Um, Back in 1994, some really, really smart Lions Club members learned about mobile health screening that was going on someplace else and brought that concept back here to Oregon to the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation. And through some hard work and good fundraising, uh, started the program here in 1994 and 1995 with a truck and trailer. Uh, during that year, uh, the Lions were able to screen about 7,700 people. It was designed initially to help do health screening uh, vision, hearing, blood pressure, diabetes, glaucoma for uninsured adults. And we did about 7,700 people that first year in 1994 and 1995. The program took off like gangbusters, really, really grew. And we had to add another truck and trailer. And over the years, we were, we were screening 25 to 30,000 people in Oregon. A few years ago, uh, some more smart lions took a look at that program and tried to find out how it could be handled more efficiently because we were finding that about 90% of the people that we were helping, that we were screening, were school kids in schools. We had contacts all over the state to drive these trucks onto school grounds and herd kids out and into the truck for vision and hearing screenings. So, so let me stop you for just mm -hmm. a moment, because I, if I understand this right, and again, think back to when we were kids. You grew up here in Beaverton, correct? Yes. Okay, so yep. I grew up down the road in Salem, and when we were little kids, pretty much every kid, sometime early in the school year, you know, went into the gymnasium, and, and we had our vision screened, and, and we had our hearing screened, and they patted us on the head, and we went back to class, and we never thought twice about it. But over the years, if I understand it right, uh, budgets get cut. Okay, so a lot of kids, uh, they just simply don't have their vision screened or their hearing screened in schools anymore because there aren't enough nurses to, to conduct the screenings like the, it used to be. Uh, so this is where the Lions Clubs have stepped in, is they recruit volunteers, they come into the schools, uh, the nurse uh, is scheduled to come in and, and assist in, in the best cases. And these kids are still being screened. And why is it important? Why, why is it important that kids are having their vision screened? Uh, it's, it's vitally important that kids be able to see and hear effectively in, in their formative learning years. Uh, if a kiddo uh, has an undetected, uncorrected vision or hearing problem, um, they're not going to perform as well in school. They're not going to have the success. Uh, and they're going to see that they're not keeping up with their peers and they're going to become discouraged. 
um, if these problems continue. Um, a lot of times we see behavior problems and uh, the behaviors that discouragement leads to low self-esteem and things kind of spiral downward out of control it leads to serious behavior problems. Uh, uh, lower quality education, lack of, of, of desire to go on to continuing education, um, lower employability, um, and again, more and more behavior problems. Mm -hmm. And that's why vision and hearing screening for school kids is so vitally important so that they can enjoy the full experience of their education. Yeah, Brad, you did a nice job of explaining that. You know, here at uh Knights of the Blind, we have this phenomenal staff, research team, that gives me some information. And, mm -hmm. and what they've, uh, one statistic that they gave me is that about 25% of all kids in the United States have a vision issue. Uh, however, s studies show that less than three out of 10 actually have eyeglasses. And from what I understand, that uh, you know, if, a, if a child does not see well, they tend to not read well. And again, our, our amazing research team has informed me that uh, kids in the third grade that don't read at a third grade level tend to not graduate from high school later in life. And these are the kids, as you alluded to, then become a, a, a challenge for our, our, our society to have to deal with. So when you're going into the schools and screening kids for vision, you're actually helping them learn. You're okay. helping them read which is keeping them in school and keep, keeping them on track at, academically, uh, socially, and giving them a better chance to Absolutely. succeed. Absolutely. It gives them the opportunity to succeed that they all should have. Okay. So now, again, when I, you know, 80 years ago when I was a little kid and they screened in my vision, there was the, 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 the chart with the E's and mm -hmm. you pointed up or this or that. They don't use that anymore. Some schools maybe do, but you don't. Mm -hmm. You have some new technology we have some that you brought with you today. Great new right? technology. Why don't you yeah. show that? Let's, let's take a look at that. We have the uh, recently acquired Pedia Vision Spot photo vision screening device. It looks like a Polaroid camera. It looks like a big old, big snouted camera. And um, this gives us such a great opportunity to be more efficient and effective and completely objective in our vision screenings. Uh, the um, staff at the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation, those amazing people that you referred to, uh, learned about these a while back, did some great empirical research, chose this particular model. Um, and did an amazing job with the Lions to get funding to buy 20 of these guys from, with uh, very generous grants from the Lions, Inter Lions Club International Foundation and the Swindell Family Trust. And so now we have 20 of these that we can take out to do school screenings. We did a great job in the past with our HOTV vision charts. It's the old E chart, but updated a little bit. Ah, the, okay. the good old vision screening chart that you put on the wall and let the kid look at, cover in one eye. Um, we had eager volunteers that did wonderful work for us, um, but this is just a quantum leap in the quality of screening that we can do for a kiddo. Um, in just seconds, we can actually acquire empirical prescriptive measurements of a kiddo's eyes that can then, if there's a problem, if it detects a problem, can be given to the parent, taken to an eye care professional, and that's the basis for the beginning of a comprehensive real vision exam. Okay, so what I understand is that uh, in, in screening children's eyes that there are some challenges that exist, uh, and you've addressed a couple of them, but some of them uh, that, that maybe I missed was that just simply non-English speaking children. Uh, right here in the Beaverton School District last year, uh, we had, I believe it was 30 language groups to deal with. Well, how many? How? 30. 30 different types? Three zero. Wow. 30 different <laughs> languages from Somali to Spanish to Hindi to, I, mean, I have a hard enough time with English, obviously, that I had, it, it, was, it, it was a huge challenge for us. So if a child is, say, six or seven years old and English is a new language for them, uh, this eliminates the guesswork behind whether or not they're seeing that chart on the wall. Exactly, okay. because this is looking right into their eyes. All they have to do is look at the bright lights, and in seconds, 
it'll capture their visual Great. So th this is really uh, amazing technology because basically what this is is a camera. It's a computer. Yep. We'll talk about a little bit about the, 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 the computer. The capacity of these is amazing. Um, school districts have uh, a great trust agreement with the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation. They supply some data to us about their students. That data goes into a spreadsheet. That spreadsheet is then fed into the computer in this device and we can pull up that student's ID number, confirm that Andrew is Andrew, and say, Andrew, look at my cool green and blue lights, mm. and boom. And then at the end of the day, download all that data onto a memory stick, give it back to our great IT staff, and then in a, a, a short time, that whole spreadsheet with all of these kids results goes back to the school nurse. Very nice, very yeah. nice. So they now, have that resource to work from. Okay, so I, I think that we've got a slide that we're going to bring up on the screen that's going to show uh, an image of this camera and also a quote from a, a, a health representative uh, by the name of Matt Livingston who's with School Health Incorporated which is one of the leading corporations that sell school supplies and there it is in front of you right now um, there's an image on your right hand side that shows what the spot device looks like um, but look at that quote um, that your organization Brad is now recognized as one of the premier school-based health screening organizations in the country that congratulations on that well thank you Doug that's uh that's part of our evil plan. Which is, you know, <laughs> great for your organization's self-esteem, mm -hmm. but most importantly, it means that kids in Oregon are accurately being screened for, for vision and for hearing so that we can find out if they have a need and point them in dire the direction of having that need addressed. In fact, let me ask you, let's say little Johnny or little Susie uh, attends uh, a school here in Beaverton, and, and, and with the help of this, you identified that, wow, they, they need to go to the eye doctor. Right. And let's say they need eyeglasses. What, what happens next if they can't afford? Eyeglasses aren't cheap. Okay, well, the first thing we do is hit the print button on this device, which goes to our wireless printer, the network that we've established at the school there, and we print a copy of the results of that screening. Okay. That copy will have a picture of that child's eyes and their prescriptive information that we found. And that's going to go to mom and dad as soon as possible. That and all of our other results are going to get to mom and dad as soon as possible with information on how we can help them if they need to. So the resources that the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation has to assist parents with getting their kids good comprehensive eye exams and eyeglasses so that they can do better in okay. school. Okay, great. So let me ask you that. Let, let's, say I'm a, let's say I'm a single dad and I get this form. My son brings it home and it says, you, your child needs to go to the eye doctor. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I, I, I just, I can't afford glasses. Uh, I heard my neighbor bought glasses for his kid and it cost him 350 bucks. And I, I just can't afford that. What, what are some of my options? How can you help me? in that situation. The Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation administers the KEX Kids Fund mm. in the region that KEX reaches and that will help people get eye exams and glasses for their kids. In other areas we work through a big really nice insurance company called Vision Service Plan. Sight First I think is Sight, Sight for, for Students Sight program. For students. Sight for Students. Uh, it does the same thing, free vision exams and free eyeglasses for kids. It, this can be administered through the schools and through the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation. We have tremendous resources to help people. Okay, great. And great. if that doesn't get it, their local Lions Club will step up. So, so what I'm hearing you say is that if a child has a need uh, for eyeglasses, for a, an exam, and, and mom or dad just can't afford glasses right now, it's okay. The Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation, uh, the KX Kids Fund, and Paul Lemon, by the way, I know, and his wife Vicki have worked for years raising money for the KX Kids Fund, which does provide free eye exams and free eyeglasses. What I'm hearing you say, and I think also the Oregon Health Plan uh, has... Uh, but they're very, very simple. What you're saying is that there's no reason for a child to go without an eye exam and exactly. eyeglasses. 
Uh, in fact, let's bring up, if we could, I uh, believe we have, mm -hmm. it was in Astoria, I think, recently. Yes. So that if those are interested in not just finding out more, but if, if, if our viewers have a need to contact the Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation, uh, I believe we've got a phone number. Uh, there it is, 503 Four one three seven three nine nine. That can be called. There's also um, a website. There's an email address there that can be contacted uh, to be put in touch with healthcare providers uh, here in the area that can give free exams and, and, and free eyeglasses. We want to make sure that every child that needs assistance can receive that uh, because a lot of kids don't know that they can't see well. You know, we right. only know the world as, as we see it. And they don't find out until we could. The image that showed the truck and the one of those Knights of the Blind that this show is all about. So it's great to have you here. So you. you talked a little bit about uh, uh, this truck that drives around, and you identified that uh, that it was there was an assessment done, and most of the people screened are actually kids. And I understand that there was a, a fundraising campaign, a 2020 Vision campaign that That's was recently right. completed to help kids. Tell us a little bit about that. That's right. The goal of the 2020 Vision campaign was to raise about 650, well it was to raise $615,000 and then to utilize that $615,000 to and they go to little controller buttons that the kids press. And um, high mileage vehicles. Great. To go around the state and provide these services in the schools much more mobile, much more man portable. Uh, that all four corners of the state. It travels all four, the, the fiscal part of it was completed uh, in May of this year, uh, $615,000 was raised. Um, the goal, the end goal was by the year 2016 to screen 50,000 people in the state of Oregon. Wow. Uh, we kind of crushed that goal uh, because in June of this year, we screened over. We had screened over 52,000 people in the state of Oregon. We're three years early, and uh, way over the mark. I, I, we also have a, an image of, of some of these new cars, and uh, in just a moment, that's going to look at that. There it is. Uh, so in the background is the truck that you were telling us about. Yep, we've still got our great old Freightliner tractor and our 53-foot low boy. My research team tells me that that truck has in there, in addition to sight and hearing screening equipment equipment that allows you to screen for glaucoma and blood pressure and diabetes. That's correct. So uh, let's keep that image up there for a minute. Tell us some of the different events around Oregon that that truck travels to and participates in. Uh, just Friday I drove it down to Woodburn where one of my one of my partners uh, worked on Saturday for a community health screening uh, at a uh, at a clinic. Oh, and there's a great shot uh, there of it just is the truck. In front of Portland City Hall, we were down there and we did a screening for anybody that was uh, around. Um, next weekend, we'll be at the Asian Health Fair in Portland. Uh, it's at the uh, Portland Blues Festival at Waterfront Park for days on end. Which, uh, which I love hearing about that. It, well, no, no pun intended, but <laughs> so here it is at the Blues Festival. And you're screening for hearing in the back of that truck. It's a little tough. <laughs> it, we, we, we love a good challenge. Oh, that's great. Um, and you're there for like four days, right? That's right. Anywhere a Lions Club requests, if we can schedule it, we'll get that truck there. Um, I'm going to Jordan Valley, Oregon. In Tell a us where weeks. Jordan Valley is. Jordan Valley is as far away from Portland <laughs> as you can get and still be in the state of Oregon. Right. It is on the border of Idaho. The easy way to drive that big truck and trailer is to take it into Idaho and come back. Great, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's in a different time zone. So I've told you about this great research team that we have here on Knights of the Blind. They have told me that uh, that truck, uh, it travels 30,000 miles a, a year plus. It's been to Brookings, which is as far southwest as you can mm -hmm. get. In fact, you do have to go into California through to almost to Crescent City and then back up to get to Brookings. Right. It's, it goes there. Um, it's been up into Joseph, which is the it's extreme north east corner, corner of Oregon. Mm -hmm. It was in Astoria, I think, recently. Yep. So it literally goes travels to all four corners of the state. It travels to all four corners of the state and all points in between. That's fantastic. It's fantastic. And, and, and if we could, the image that showed the truck and the cars, uh, if that could come back up, because what I love about the expansion, thank you, what I love about the expansion of your program is that in the back is, the, again, the truck, which I, I, I visualize as kind of like the ocean liner. 
But now you've got a bunch of speed boats in the foreground here. Um, looks like you've got a couple of, uh, of Toyota RAV4s there. We've got two Toyota RAV4s. Which, We've... by the way, you bought at Beaverton Toyota. Exactly. And Not a sponsor of our program yet, but maybe one day they will be. And a Toyota Prius that was also acquired through Beaverton Toyota. And oh. we have two Nissan Rogues. Which was purchased at Beaverton, Beaverton Nissan. Nissan. Yeah, so uh, yeah. We Good love the local, local Beaverton yeah. uh, uh, new car dealers mm -hmm. here in the area. Uh, as you can tell, they're very distinctively marked. Um, everybody looks at us as we drive down the freeway. So what this represents, they're not just these sleek, beautiful, fuel-efficient vehicles, which they are, uh, but it gives you the ability to be in what? One, two, three, four, five, six places at once at the same time. That's right. Every one of those fuel-efficient vehicles carries uh, five audiometers and two spot devices and all the extraneous materials that we need to do a screening, as well as what we talked about being on the truck. Uh, just for instance, on Saturday, uh, there were four screenings going on just on just a so couple you, of days you ago. You had them in Astoria. Astoria, Woodburn, Salem, and Portland. And Portland, all in the same day. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Now, that leads me to... Uh, to also mention to our, our viewers that it's great that you've got you know this state-of-the-art technology, you, you've got these great fuel-efficient vehicles, but if I understand it, one component that's needed are, are volunteers, adult, adult volunteers, especially here in Beaverton. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, we had a wonderful experience with the Beaverton School District last year when we were, we were asked to come and screen their kids. The Beaverton School District is 34 schools, uh, about 18,000 kids total. We screened kinders, first, third, and fifth graders. And it was a big, big task. We need volunteers for every one of those screening events. One or two staff members will come, but we still need volunteers to help us. Tell us what the volunteers The volunteers do. actually do the screenings. They actually run the screening equipment. They will run our audiometers. So you're going to teach They'll, them we'll how teach to use this. If I can learn how to use this, anybody can. It is so simple. Okay. It is so breathtakingly simple. It's great. Some um, people are a little afraid of computers. Here we talked about this being a computer. It's, and it's, it's, a, it's a little daunting when you look at it. It's very daunting when you look at the audiometers because they're small little machines, but there's lots of wires. They go to headsets, and they go to little controller buttons that the kids press, and there's the power. Uh, but they're very, very simple. These, all of these screening instruments run themselves. Okay, so what you're saying is that if I'm an adult here in the Beaverton area, I and we're going to bring up a number again that you can call in just a minute. Uh, I, I show up, I probably have to have a, a, an application accepted and probably some background screening, and I show up. You're going to show me how to use this computerized handheld camera within a couple of minutes, and I'm going to be working hand in hand with you you're and some be other lions. Right beside me and some other lions and other staff members from the foundation. Wow! And we're going to screen hundreds and hundreds of kids. And we're going to catch kids day. that need to go to the eye doctor every day. Okay, so we've talked about uh, children that you know don't see as well as they could if they had eyeglasses, and that's so important. But there's also children uh, that have amblyopia or, or lazy right. eye. Tell us a little bit about the importance of catching that early. That is a condition that's critically important to catch early. By the, by the time a kiddo is five or six years old, um, because if we don't catch it and it doesn't start getting treated at that age, that kiddo is going to lose sight in that eye. They're going to mm -hmm. lose the ability to use that eye. That lazy eye is just going to stop working. Um, we have friends of the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation who were undetected and who only see out of one eye hmm. and as adults and it's it's harder for them and there's no reason for that so if it's caught early enough i think this is when the children basically and here's the test that's thank you for showing this the, right. tell us what's being shown right here this is a random dot e stereo vision test and this is one of the funnest things we do because we can have a a, a few seconds of real personal contact with a kiddo We'll put those cool glasses on them, and those are stereo vision glasses. They're the same type of glasses that you would wear to a 3D movie. And what this tests for is if the kiddo's eyes are working together, if they're both working. There's a raised E, as you can see on the left, and there's a blank on the right. And we'll ask the kiddo, point to the E. If both eyes are working, they can see that E. If, if only one eye is looking at it, they can't see the outline of the E. 
And, and again, it's a very normal condition that some children just simply have an optic nerve that is not working you know, with the brain as the other eye's optic nerve is. It's, so there's nothing serious. It's not a disease or anything like that. It just needs to be, pat the good eye just is patched, if I understand right. it right. And make the lazy, make the eye, lazy eye, eye work. Yeah we, right. yeah, we make the lazy eye work. And yeah. if I understand it, again, our research team tells me that about 4 or 5% of all children have amblyopia. Mm -hmm. The key is identifying who those kids are so that they can have the good eye patched and right. have that lazy eye catch up with the good eye. My little brother, or my, my older brother, had the same condition as a, mm -hmm. as a child also. Yeah, it's like I said, if, if we can catch it by the time my kiddo is five, six, seven years old, um, patch therapy works great. There are other treatments and a kid will retain the vision in that eye. Yeah, it's just amazing. And, and, and especially that last, uh, you know, explanation really shows how Brad you really are one of the Knights of the Blind I mean you are literally out there saving children's vision and, and we appreciate that I know just real quickly I think we have an image that shows a map of Oregon and where all these Lions Clubs are um, that's the impact that Lions have in Oregon there's over 175 Lions Clubs and I'm hoping that somebody out there might be interested in finding out more about the Lions so uh, continue to watch Knights of the Blind thank you for watching today um, Brad, it was great having you here. Doug, Keep up the great work. Thanks for being a Knight of the Blind, and thank, thank you. you for watching us. We'll see you next time on Knights of the Blind.